Hi, Lee Ellis here with another installment of Leading with Honor, Coaching. Well, this month is very special in that my friend Tom Crawford is going to be with us today. I heard Tom speak recently at our CEO NetWeavers meeting, and his words were so aligned. I, I knew we thought a lot alike. Of course, his experience is a lot more than mine, but hearing him talk about things about accountability and fear and listening, leaders listening, it really hit such a, a strong note in my spirit about what we are talking about here at Leading with Honor Coaching. I wanted to bring him on and let him share with some of those thoughts with you today. Now, Tom has been a CEO since 1984. Can you imagine that? And very, very successful. In 1984, he founded a group called Southern Heritage Insurance, which was the first new insurance company in the country since 1950, so that was quite a deal. That company was a public company and then was sold, and Tom became the CEO of Proofpack, which is Prudential's property and casualty company, and then chairman and CEO at Prudential. So quite a resume there, but then he went to Crawford & Company, which is the world's largest uh, claim settlement group, and then was CEO there. So this man has been CEO so successful in so many places. And now with Crawford Corporate Coaching, his own coaching company, he helps CEOs work through the minefields that come to leadership and come their way. So Tom, it's so great to have you here today. and I'm honored to be in your presence. I always uh, enjoy Tom. He's just a wonderful guy. In one of our conversations early on, you shared with me how you grew up in um, the Virginia area and you worked in some tough jobs, uh, kind of like I did growing up to make money to go to school and everything. And you talked about how you learned a lot as a 19 or so year old working but you learn from just the workers, and tell me about that, how you learn to listen. Well, I was out in the field, heavy construction, uh, doing, driving heavy equipment and what have you, but on rainy days we'd all be in the garage not having to work and, mm -hmm. and just communicating back and forth but with people that were out of the mountains of Virginia and West Virginia and locally. Some of us college kids were working through college and others uh, just working because they had to work. And I found that their love for their family, their love for what they were doing, their love of traveling hundreds of miles to and from the job to be with that family was extremely important to them. Mm -hmm. Regardless of education, educational backgrounds, they were good, solid people who wanted to do a good, solid job. And I, I carried that with me because mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you think without the education, you, you really can't be a solid citizen, but you can. Mm -hmm. And that uh, has been with me forever, actually, and right. how to treat people at all levels. Yeah, so you've always made a point of being able to, taking time to listen to people at lower levels and valuing what they brought to the table. Yes, and I can give you some examples later about how important it is to listen and give feedback and forth between mm -hmm. leadership and people that are working for you. Right. Extremely important. Right. I know one of the other uh, things that you really believe strongly in is building trust and uh, eliminating fear. Talk to us a little bit about how that works for you and what you've learned. Well, I've sat in meetings, and I'm sure you have too, where you walk into a room and there's this intimidation. And are you not sure what's going to take place? And I've tried to eliminate that in all meetings, and it's easy to do. And well, I know we'll be talking about accountability, but if without accountability, you walk into a room and you probably are going to have intimidation or fear. And I've tried to eliminate that with the management system that uh, I try to use in running companies. Well, now some people would say, in fact, when I wrote the book, uh, Engage with Honor, Building a Culture of Courageous Accountability, some people said, well, I don't think you should use that word accountability because that sounds like punishment. And yet you're saying that accountability actually frees people up to feel safe, so help me understand that a little bit no, too. No question about the fact that accountability is a major factor in the success of a company. Mm -hmm. And it starts at the top. The top, the leadership has to have accountability and it has to go all the way down to the mailroom, mm -hmm. which I happened to be in at one time when I started my career. And I wondered what was going on. And I wondered if they knew what I was doing to get mm -hmm. the work flowing out through the company. I was a, a low level clerk. And accountability was important to me then, and it's important to me now. And I don't think people are afraid of accountability. They need to know what their responsibilities are, how they're going to be measured, 
and then recognize if you get the job done. Right. Accountability should not put fear into anybody. So would you think that um, what my experience has been, a lot of times people are afraid because they don't know what's expected. They're afraid somebody's going to expect something they, out of them they haven't even been told about and it's going to come as a surprise. They're really afraid of the surprise that might come with what's called accountability. Well, I think that uh, what creates the fear of walking into a room mm -hmm. without knowing what's going to take place. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that my management meetings, when they walk in that door, know exactly what their accountability is. They know exactly what's going to take place in that room. And they also know that there's not going to be any yelling and shouting and cursing. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't allow that. Mm -hmm. and. It, that does nothing but build up fear inside somebody. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go in that room. Mm -hmm. I want them to think, I want to go in there. I want to say, here's what we've done compared to what we said we were going to do. Mm -hmm. And oh, by the way, there's an issue and here's what it is. Mm -hmm. That's the environment you want to build into a company. So how do you get that kind of trust where people feel that safe? Well, I think first off, you, you build the, the objectives of the company as a team. Mm -hmm. You build the vision and mission as a team. Mm -hmm. You know, so many times a CEO can walk in and I've seen it happen. Here's our vision. Well, it's not our vision. It's your vision. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is make it our vision. Mm -hmm. And you build a team by getting them to take part in establishing the vision. And what's amazing is when the people, the, the people who report directly to the CEO, their vision comes out as strong, if not stronger, than what the CEO's vision was. So that starts the, the teamwork building process. So people understand they're coming from the same, you've got alignment, you've created alignment around that vision so they have ownership there. Yeah. Well, I think we're about out of time today, but could you stay for one more session? We'll talk a little bit about building trust. Absolutely. Love to. Great. Well, thank you so much, Tom. So glad to have you, and I'm really a great admirer of yours, and try to, I learn something every time we're together. Well, that goes back and forth. Everyone's an admirer of you and what you've done in your life and what you're doing now. Thank you, Tom. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's uh, coaching session. Tell your friends about it. Obviously, we have a world-class expert. He's on five different boards, chairman of a couple of boards, I think. And so this man uh, eats, sleeps, leadership, uh, servant type leadership, the kind that we advocate here at Leading with Honor. So glad to have you and thank you for being with us, Tom. Thank you, Luke.